Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today's violin lesson will be on the concertino in D major by Kushler. It's a three movement work and today we'll just talk about the first movement. So this is, it says in the style of Antonio Vivaldi and it certainly is. It has lots of staccato, lots of eighth notes with sixteenth notes. And the most important expressive device we're going to use is dynamics, forte piano. So it starts forte, we've got two sharps, key of D major, clearly F sharp, C sharp, 4-4 four, four time, we'll start. So make sure you put a little vibrato on the quarter notes. Kind of nice bouncy kind of feeling. Nice, nice opening theme. We've got a lot of a lot of sixteenths. And in my experience teaching this, that these sixteenths are pretty easy until we get some of these accidentals like this. For the student to be aware, waiting for that one to come. And then drop the dynamic beam boom. And then we're forte. Piano. That forte and then the echo. Same. I recommend keep the fourth finger going there. Don't play the open. And then piano. Now now this passage. Lots of my students have problems with this passage. We play it slow. To get that C sharp in tune is tricky. Got to slide the fingers around. That that one is tricky in bar in bar 15. I always recommend bring the elbow around a little. Give a little more leverage there. And this one with the C sharp tucked under. So it's a tricky, tricky passage overall. You practice it slow. It flows pretty well once you get it. You gotta hold fingers down whenever you can, but then you get it up to speed. It's nice, it's very challenging, and feels so good when you get it. All right, so we go ahead. There, I would recommend four. Keep it, keep it easy for the bow. Keep it easy and clean across strings. Then we're back to like the beginning. How about go to third position this time? So that's pretty much just like the beginning. Now we've got these last two lines. This is a lot of fun where we're doing shifting first position. How about second position? That's pretty nice. So what you've done is you played C sharp A and you replaced the, the second finger C sharp with the first finger C sharp and you're in second position. But then you got to remember you got a G natural coming out. And now the third position. This one's easier because you play the same pattern going across strings. And then come to first position. And with the hairpins, don't forget the hairpins, that makes it interesting. I would say that Vivaldi would never write in the hairpins, but it's just natural to the music. It goes down, you drop the dynamic, it comes up, you raise the dynamic. And then at the end, where you put, I would say play the open four. 
That way you get a little bit more meaty sound on those two Ds. Okay, so we're going ahead now. This is into the second page. That's another one. My students always have problems finding that C sharp. A piano. There's a C sharp again. So now, setting forth the next section. Yeah, I like to go to usually the second position at that point. That way you don't have to play the F sharp on the E string. And back down to first. Oh yeah, that famous G natural. Then the next passage is a tricky passage. I like the fingering going to second position. So I'm playing second position so it's clean. Shift on the F, last F sharp to set up the fourth beat. You could play it of course in first. It's awfully hard. Every time I find my first finger touching that D string, maybe my finger's too thick down there, so I just do an alternative. And then going ahead, I mean, either one, either one of those fingerings will work. If you're playing in second, you're going to come back to first position before the fourth beat and stay there. And of course holding fingers down wherever you can and then shift back to second. You notice I bring my elbow way around to try to avoid touching that D string. Now this one I find the last beat of, of measure 53 very hard to make that even. So I find it's easier just to go to second position again. There's plenty of time to do it. On the open, you got the open D string and go up to second and then back to first. like a great great mountain that we've climbed at the end of this feels so good and now we're back like the beginning of the piece again try third position see what happens if you miss you know yeah it only hurts once right Now let's set up a good ending. Third position. Get up, get up on the G string. That's exciting. You got a choice. You could go directly to fifth position with the second finger, or you could play in fourth position with the third finger. And then you do an extension to the high A. You know, that's, that's one thing that's wonderful about this piece is you notice as I'm playing, I'm smiling. And that's, Vivaldi is like that also, if you think about the seasons. This is kind of happy music, if you will. Uh, it certainly makes me feel good. And so, you know, this, this music is like that too. You want to be thinking, smiling all the time that you're playing. Well, maybe, maybe when it goes to minor, you don't have to smile. <laughs> but anyhow, so I hope this is helpful to you, you know, especially giving you some alternative fingerings, emphasizing dynamics, 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 especially for young players. 
dynamics are absolutely fundamental for expression because you're young and you really you haven't lived life yet <laughs> not as many years as I have and when you get those years behind you you know then you have more to say but in the early stages really emphasize the dynamics and it will help bring the music to life for you also okay thanks so much for listening and Pretty soon I'll do the second and third movement so we can have the whole concerto. Have a great day.